language has always been everything. And so this poem is called The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, Ayum wants to learn the Pledge of Allegiance. Ayum, for which it stands one nation under God, stepped into the fifth grade second language learning course mid-year after failing the English standardized testing. She is always the first to answer, the last to speak. She's surrounded by a whole bunch of somewhere else but live here now who raise their hands and start every sentence with, Ex -ex excuse me, Miss Teacher. You see, Ayum views differently words than most. The doctors call it dyslexia with liberty, but there is a difference between seeing words differently and choking on two tongues while trying to breathe. Ayum is the only student born in the United States in the course, which is to say, one tongue will be lost here. The students stand to speak the Pledge of Allegiance with liberty and justice for all. Ayum remain seated, trying to digest each word. I, I, I pledge, I, I, I pledge, I, I pledge. But an accent is just a mother tongue that cannot see her child go. Ayum is angry because she feels as though language stretched its back into a lie. How there are many words in English that does not translate in Somali and Somali that does not translate in English. Where words are backwards, opposite. The Somali language is birthed from the verbal sight. The language is built from describing words. Where words are as much sight than teeth. See, her inability to speak language and translate that as shame. You see, throughout the whole anthem, Ayum tends to say things differently in the wrong order. And as I tried to correct her, cor correct her, I try, try to correct to work, I, she asked me, what does the word justice mean? The word liberty. The word united. And why am I pledging to something I cannot see? How can I say something through my teeth I cannot see? Is this what language should be? To lose my sight in order to learn English. Dys dyslexia is what the doctor called it. Doctor Dyslexia called it. it. They called Doctor Dyslexia. They said she didn't love her country called her out of her name until she no longer saw her name in the right order, in the right language. Ayum, I, I pledge, I pledge, Ayum, I, I pledge, I, Ayum, I, I, I pledge, Muna, I, I, I pledge, Muna, I pledge, Muna, I pledge, Muna, I pledge of allegiance. Muna. I, I started translating my name into English the same way I was born into this country. Backwards. Because to speak this language in my name with this alphabet is to know the language of drowning, the language of pretending, the language of assimilation inside the womb, but I did it. I learned English, mastered its accents until it stretched its back into a band-aid to replace losing myself in its tongue. You see, I learned, I learned English, but lost language. To learn and not to learn. No language was my only inheritance until I learned one word and just one word. Community. And saw an ocean. The first word I saw and felt in my bones that taught me how to find words strong enough to rip open space for me to speak into, who taught me the power of a syllable that turns into a vowel, that turns into a word, that turns into a sentence, you see? Because to know a dictionary has always just been a book and our words are home. I didn't learn English. I learned how to make a home of it. 
speak each other into belonging and belonging and belonging. You see, I speak English. I speak three other languages and each I am a woman. In each, I am my mother. In each, I am my grandmother's. And I speak, and I speak, and I speak, and I speak into belonging for each other, and I speak into belonging for one another, and yet I speak, and yet I speak, and yet I speak, and yet I speak.